Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So I've heard a lot of times, um, a lot of the, the people, when I talk to them uh, that are born Muslims, and they talk to me and they're like, so many Muslims out there, they're, and they're, they're Muslims by name only. You know, they're not, they're not like in reality, they're not real Muslims. They're, they're just by name. This is, this, this, this is a very problematic statement in, in two ways. Even if they don't mean to do takfir on these people, like to say that they're not Muslims, they mean that this person's Islam is in question. And this is not okay. And, and this is a, a basic principle of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that someone when they come into Islam, whether it's by the Shahadatain or whether being, it's being born into, uh, into, the, uh, into a family that has, that has a Muslim parent in it, then in this case, this person's a Muslim. You know, and this person's mus this Islam, like this Islam status, is something that's not in question. It's not allowed to be questioned unless this person comes with kufr. And so until this person comes up with kufr, there's no questioning this person's status as a Muslim. Whether they're an evil Muslim, a terrible Muslim, you know, or like just a bad Muslim, okay, this is all fine, but they're definitely Muslim. So we should never have this, this, uh, this statement of like, they're just Muslim by name. No. It's like, if you mean by Muslim, like linguistically, that's something, but that's not the, that's not the sense that comes around. Because of course, Muslim uh, linguistically means someone who submits themselves to Allah. And of course, every single person, they have to submit themselves to Allah. If they don't submit themselves to Allah, at least in the smallest sense, then that shows that they have no iman in their heart. Um, and and this, this, this would come out, and of course this is something, unless it comes out, we still say they're Muslim on the outside. And there's no, nothing, we never open up people's hearts to see if they're really Muslim or not. This is not something that is, is permissible, and this comes from the, the hadith that the Prophet wasallam, when he was confronted with a man that was in the battlefield, that um, he, was, he was fighting a man, and then right, uh, right when he got the one up on this, on, on this kafir that he was fighting, the, the man said, uh, he gave the shahadatain. He said, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah." And then um, the Sahabi that saw him say this, he he basically understood this guy was just trying to save his neck, so he killed him. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he saw this, he said, "Did you kill him after he said la ilaha illallah?" And he kept repeating this. He's like, "What are you gonna do on the day of judgment when he said uh, uh, when he uh, with la ilaha illallah? What are you gonna do on the day of judgment with la ilaha illallah?" And so this was like a severe, and he was repeating himself with this. And he said, did you open up his heart to see if he really meant it? Uh, when, when he said, oh, I just did this, uh, uh, I, I thought he just said this because he was trying to, uh, he was just trying to save his skin. Um, and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, did you open up his heart? Did you cut up in his heart to see if he meant it or not? And so, of course, this is not an issue that we ever play with Ahl uh, Sunnah wal Jama'at. We always affirm that someone is Muslim until something clear comes that proves otherwise and um, and then in that case it's not for the the normal regular people to do take fear of this person this is for uh, the people of knowledge um, to do this or someone that's in like a like a qadi or whatnot that actually has the the qualifications to do this uh, to do this at, uh, like and say that this person is no longer Muslim but we always say that this person is Muslim even if they're a terrible Muslim we want the best for them and we, and we call them to, to worship Allah and we do the best that we can do but we never want to put anyone's Mus uh, like Islam in, in, in question this is not something that we do and we don't test people we don't uh, ask oh is this person really Muslim and ask a bunch of questions to make sure that they're really Muslim no if this person has signs of uh, Islam that they gave to you in the in like the outward the signs. Maybe you don't know this person, but he gave salams upon um, to you, or this is a woman. She's wearing hijab. Like this is outward signs of Islam. We take it and we take it as if this person is Muslim without a doubt. Until proven otherwise, this is how we deal with them, and we always give them respect of a Muslim that all of the Muslims deserve. And this is very important. And um, even though I know like the sad state of the Ummah in this day is that many people don't practice their Islam properly, um, and even. And even if someone say they don't pray, they don't do some of the, the arkan of Islam, the, the person who comes into Islam with la ilaha illallah or is born into a, a family that is Muslim, then this person is Muslim. Now there's a debate on whether or not someone who um, leaves the prayer, uh, whether, or not they're, uh, whether or not they're still a Muslim or not. But this is something that we don't do as individuals. This is the area of ijtihad that we leave to um, scholars to talk about this issue and whatnot. And if they're going to make a ruling in this, then that's something that to make a ruling of it. Like the, there's a huge debate about, about like if somebody leaves the salat, are they still Muslim or not? 
And the just to put it like simply, the majority of the scholars, and there's like the, the majority of the scholars, like the four the four madhabs, they say that this person is not uh, is not a disbeliever for leaving the, the salah. And there's one there's one view in the the Hanbali madhab that yes he does uh, become a disbeliever. And then there's there's views when does he become a disbeliever? Did he become a disbeliever when he decided not to not to pray one prayer? And then what if he wants to make it up? Did he make it up or when does he become a disbeliever in this in this way? And so this is a whole long, long, long discussion of like when did he actually become a disbeliever? Was it when he uh, when he delayed the salah from like um, from like uh, um, and Asr intentionally, delayed it until the time went out, then he becomes a disbeliever? Or when is it? And there's a huge discussion in there and there's a lot of um, debate even in that. So of course, like for a regular Muslim, uh, and for like a, a lay person to talk about somebody or question their Islam just because they don't pray or because they don't practice well or because they have this, that, and the other that's a major sin, this is not for us to ever do. We say that the, the view of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'ah is that we say that this person is Muslim. They're, they're Muslim until there's clear evidence that proves otherwise. And it's not for us to do these, um, to do these like very, very um, fine, tricky judgment calls. Um, and, and this is left to the, the people, the scholars, and for the Ahlul Ain uh, to do these things. And the, the strong, like the majority of the scholars are upon the view that, um, that someone leaving the Salah is a major sinner. Without a doubt, this person is a major sinner and subject to, uh, is subject to severe punishment in the afterlife. But this person, would, uh, will eventually um, come out of the hellfire if he gets if he uh, is uh, if Allah chooses to punish him according to his uh, in, according to his justice. If He gives him his justice, this person would go to the hellfire. And if he comes out of the hellfire, then he's going to come into Jannah at the end. If he had la ilaha illallah, as long as he didn't do anything that nullifies that, then he's still a Muslim. Uh, Wallah ta'ala a'lam. And so this is a, of course, that is a whole debate if someone leaves the salah. And this, this is not necessarily the place to go into all the details of it. But in general, we never want to question anybody's Islam. Yes, this person's a Muslim by name. They're a Muslim in, in reality. And we shouldn't say this Muslim by name only. No, this person's a Muslim and until proven otherwise. And we keep it as a firm, a firm thing. And this is one of the issues that some of the extremist organizations have gone into where they question people's Islam. And then this gives them the right. Um, they think that this gives them the right to uh, then go like destroy masjids that are um, that are filled with these questionable Muslims or destroy these things because these um, this group of Muslims or this area or this type of Muslims does certain acts of uh, whether they think they do acts of shirk or whatnot or acts of kufr then they basically do this blanket takfir or they do this blanket questioning of people's Islam and this is the beginning of a lot of these um, like the extremist organizations out there the beginning of where this started was was questioning people's Islam and so, of course, we never want to fall into this category of questioning people's Islam. We take their Islam and we take it as a, uh, and when it comes to us, we say this person is, is a Muslim with, with, with complete firm uh, belief that this person is Muslim. And of course, between him and Allah, that's something else. You know, like Allah knows the, Allah knows the, the secrets of a person and that's between him and Allah. And we have no, uh, like, that's not for us to look into. But when it comes to, uh, when it comes to the outward appearances, this is all that is our responsibility. And we, we affirm that people are Muslim until there's a, a clear evidence that they are no longer Muslim. Um, and Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Falidhalika fid'u wa istiqim kama umirta wa la tattabi' ahwa'ahum wa qul amatu bima anzala Allahu min kitab wa umirtu li a'dil baynakum Allahu rabbuna wa rabbukum lana